After nearly a year in space, NASA astronaut, astronaut Mark Vandehey and two Russian cosmonauts touchdown. are back on Earth. There is the touchdown right there in central Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. The Russian Soyuz rocket undocked from the International Space Station early this morning and landed in Kazakhstan. They return home at a time, of course, of high tensions between their respective countries over the war in Ukraine. But some history nonetheless. Yeah, there exactly. Vandehey's 355 days on board the International Space Station is the longest single space flight by an American astronaut. So really cool, despite the backdrop, obviously, with this, what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. Um, but really exciting stuff to have him back. Let's bring in retired NASA astronaut and former International Space Station commander, Leroy Chow, joining us from Houston. Leroy, thank you so much. Let's just talk about this history-making yeah. moment here by uh, Mark Vandehey. Uh, what's going uh, through your head as you're coming down in a capsule like that? Um, he's been weightless in <laughs> space for nearly a year. Right, so obviously the crew is very excited to be coming back. They've wrapped up a very successful mission. And so, you know, one more task, and that is a successful landing, which we just saw. And so, you know, at this moment, they're, uh, they're still laying on their backs, and so they're, they're not feeling particularly dizzy or uncomfortable. But once they stand up, <laughs> that's when they're going to feel really dizzy. Are you, little, like, are you a little wobbly when you try to get up after that? Oh, definitely. Yeah, even after a short space shuttle mission of, of a week or two, uh, you definitely still have those same effects. They go away a lot more quickly after a short right. flight. <laughs> uh, the long duration flight is a little more intense, and it takes a little longer to, to readjust. I can't imagine what a year would be like. Oh, my gosh. I know. And, and this may be a silly question, but I know my ears pop when I'm on an airplane. So how <laughs> is it painful when you come back and you actually touch down on Earth with your ears in particular? Actually, the, the spacecraft is maintained at one atmosphere, so you don't get cool. that popping effect that commercial airliner, the pressure is usually maintained at about 8,000 foot pressure. And so you do uh, you do equalize the spacecraft before touchdown, you know, you're still pretty high up. So you do have to kind of equalize your pressure eventually. But um, but you're you're in your spacesuit or your pressure suit. You've got your visors closed, and so uh, you don't have that same effect as awesome. on, on a commercial airline. Because that is annoying. Okay. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Let's talk about the actual mission itself. Yeah. What type of information are NASA and the Russian Space Agency gathering from these long-term space flights? Long duration flights, I mean, the primary purpose of, or the primary experiments that we do aboard the ISS uh, are physiological. So the, the astronauts will, cosmonauts will take a lot of measurements on themselves. Uh, samples are sent back. And what we're trying to do is understand and figure out what we call biomedical countermeasures on how to keep astronauts and cosmonauts healthy on a long duration space flight in preparation for a voyage to Mars. You know, so that's that's why most missions are around six months in duration, because that's what we would expect one way when the planets are aligned mm. uh, to go either from the Earth to Mars or Mars back to Earth. So we're collecting data. Uh, we're testing countermeasures, which include exercise, of course, and, and pharmaceuticals and other things uh, to, just to figure out how we can keep astronauts healthy for that hopefully upcoming Mars mission. Right. And it was so cool to see that video that we had playing just now. So since they launched into space, you know, obviously we've seen tension between Russia and the U.S. escalating pretty significantly given the war in Ukraine. Um, how does that affect their ability to work together with respect to the space programs? Well, fortunately, as we saw today, it hasn't materially affected the partnership. Uh, what is concerning, of course, is the head of Roscosmos, the director, uh, Dmitry Rogozin, is a political appointee, of course, a very close ally of President Putin. And so he is the first and only director of a space agency to openly threaten uh, the partnership, you know, and he, he was, there were veiled and not so veiled threats about leaving Mark Vandehey in orbit. Uh, there were, you know, kind of these images of separating the Russian segment from the American segment of the ISS, which really for, is not practical. Uh, you know, I, I know, I'm, I'm sure his uh, technical advisors told him, hey, we really can't do this. And so it's, um, you know, fortunately, we've seen cooler heads prevailed and, uh, the partnership survives. No hitch at all. No question that Mark Vandehey was coming down on today's space drive. Is that something that ever comes up? Just political situations. What's happening uh, with conflicts around the world between you know you're working with your your Russian counterparts essentially up sure. there on something that seems totally independent from anything that could be happening right. down on Earth. But it's also it's tough to ignore. It yeah. would seem. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, of course, everybody on board knows each other very well, been training together uh, and in many cases for years together. So you know each other very well. You become good friends. 
And just like your friends here on Earth, you can have differing opinions on, on different political things that are going on. You can discuss them. Sometimes it can get even a little bit heated. But at the end of the day, you're still friends and you still respect each other's opinions. And so uh, part of training in each other's countries is you develop that perspective to understand the other side's uh, viewpoints and mm -hmm. why it might be different. doesn't mean you necessarily agree, but, but at least you can understand each other, and that helps a lot. So there's no tension on board. The professionals on the ground, it's the same. The mission con flight controllers in Moscow and Houston, uh, very strong friendships between those two groups and very great, great working relationships, the engineers and everyone involved, all professionals on all sides, uh, making sure that these space flights are as safe as possible. So that 355 days that uh, Van de Heer was up there is pretty, uh, seems pretty significant. Uh, can you just talk about how big of a deal that is? Yes, that's a very long time. Uh, you know, my mission to the ISS many years ago, uh, just before launch, a few months before launch, there was a, a possibility that we would have to fly for a year, uh, basically to accommodate a, a tourist taking our return seats. And fortunately, that didn't come about. But, uh, you know, we were like, whoa, you know, because we were training with the expectation of a, a six and a half month flight. <laughs> we would have we would have accepted a year long flight. But, you know, a year's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of time to spend up there. Six and a half months is already a lot of time. Uh, and it has to do with your mental preparation. As long as you, you know what you're getting into uh, and you're, you set your expectations, it's, it's okay. So recently, three um, cosmonauts were, wore yellow spacesuits in the International Space Station. Um, who chooses what cosmonauts uh, wear during their missions in space and how could that choice be interpreted? Yes, yeah, so when the three latest cosmonauts arrived at the ISS, their flight suits were orange in color with, with some blue uh, blue striping on it. And uh, people, of course, speculated what that meant. Uh, the, the crew does choose their, their clothing, they, uh, but this is done months in advance. And so uh, this would have been, the selections would have been made much before the, uh, the current invasion of Ukraine. And so, you know, coincidence or not, the, these colors are also happen to be the colors of the university where all three cosmonauts graduated from oh, okay. and uh, of course they they made a kind of a, a little bit of a joke when when asked about the colors of their flight suits <laughs> by ross cosmos they, their reply was well there's a lot of yellow material left so our flight suits are yellow <laughs> I, I was about to speculate and say would it have anything to do with ukraine I know, it was like I know. staring at uh, but, but that that school you know, I, I, I don't know i'm i'm sure there i'm sure there are a lot of cosmonauts that are not uh, not pro war who you know oppose the war, but of course they're they're smart enough to do, that they know where they live and right. they can't openly say anything. And I, I don't know; it's possible it was uh, uh, you know kind of a, a lucky coincidence that it turned out to be uh, you know uh, making a statement of some kind, maybe in a subtle way. Uh, but like I said, these these uh, selections are made months before the flight, right. and so you know it was long before the uh, the war started. Yeah, so um, they landed, obviously, what happens the rest of the day? What are they doing? So they'll be they'll be out of the capsule pretty quickly. It takes about 20 minutes or so for uh, the ground, the, the crew that lands in the helicopters to come over and get the hatch open. They'll set them down in lawn chairs and let them relax for a few moments, uh, give them a quick look over, and give them the you know satellite phone so they can call their families and tell them they're <laughs> safe. And they'll, uh, they'll do a quick medical check and then you know, get them out of their suits, do a quick medical check, and then get them on the airplanes uh, to go back to Star City. Wow, very cool. Pretty cool moment there. L Leroy Chow, retired NASA astronaut and former International Space Station commander. Thank you so much for your time and your insights, sir. We appreciate you coming on. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.